T T B. Music podcast. Folks, oh, old folks. Oh, okay. You know the song. No, I don't. Right, okay. That'll be one of those uh, newfangled things. Yeah. Anyway. So this is old fangled, newfangled. Oh, oh, let's do some old fangled, newfangled stuff. Yes, we are recording. That's right. Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, fall into that trap again. Except, well, I wouldn't. Yeah, we've fallen into that trap more than once actually, but then what? Uh, okay, Shh. this podcast: Foo Fighters, Sonic Highways, Pink Floyd, The Endless River, Angelina Presley, American Middle Class, Bella Fleck, and Abigail Washburn. Uh, self-titled. Uh, 2.54 The Other Eye and Dear Hoof La Isla Bonita uh, but to kick off with uh, eighth album from the Foo Fighters uh, this one was a kind of you know, it's, I suppose it's a uh, concept album in a way yeah um, or a soundtrack yeah or a sound or both right. uh, a major company a documentary series by the same name uh, which Dave Brown decided to make by visiting various American cities to try and get the essence of what makes particular cities attract particular or produce certain kinds of music and the uh, idea was to make a, a song in each city record a song in each city and I think the process was they wrote and recorded the music and then did the interviews during the day and at night Dave Grohl went home went through the interviews and cobbled together the lyrics from things people had said during each day then went into the, the studio the following day to lay down the lyrics which might explain some of the lyrics, frankly. Um, so that's how it came about. All produced by Butch Vig, uh, who you obviously know from his Nirvana days. Wow. Um, so, yes, Sonic Highway is eight tracks, eight cities. Does it work? It does. Because <laughs> I was completely uh, naive to, to the whole backstory. Well, I was aware of some of the backstory. I knew about him touring the US. I knew about the film. I was completely naive to the whole process of writing the songs. Mm. So, actually, if you just told me this is the eighth album by the Foo Fighters, what do you think? I'd have said pretty good. Um, so yeah, no, no, that that's fascinating actually, and um, and clearly I've not picked up on on that. But yeah, now you mention it, there are those subtle differences between between the tracks. It's not a it's not a solid album of one's particular sound, um, whilst it does sort of tread over the whole rock. Yeah, I don't. I don't, what I don't it's, I don't, it's a Foo Fighters album. It's yeah. what you'd expect. Exactly. I don't. Th- I don't think it's as distinct distinct as their uh, no uh, <laughs> as they're unique, making out. unique selling point might have you believe. <laughs> it's just like listen to this. Um, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed this record. It was actually a joy to listen to. Um, I, I think we've reviewed one of the Foo Fighters. We did review album the last album, didn't we? In our time, and and again, I thought that was the best Foo Fighters album I'd heard since you know yonder days yeah. um, I, I'd, I'd say this is the same it goes one better I think it's, um, it's uh, there's enough here to keep me interested it's classic Foo Fighters it's classic rock uh, you know it does lean back I suppose the one thing is with the Butch Big influence it does lean back towards the 90s um, there is a, it does touch on some of the history of the band as well yeah. uh, whilst sounding very current and, and modern yeah I, I, um, I agree although I, I think it's I can, you, can you use the solid word uh, I think I think it's a really solid rock record. Mm. I think it's uh, not for the first time I'm going to talk about sides, partly because the next album reviewing makes a point of talking about yeah. sides. Um, but for me, if this was if this was a traditional album, uh, side one, side two, uh, this would be a side two album for me. Yeah. Since I actually think the, the actually. second four tracks are the stronger tracks on the album. Yeah. Look, look here on my notes. Ah. Yeah, see, I've put a star next to the last two tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the last two tracks in particular, I think, are re- particularly. Re- really good. They're slightly, slightly mellower, mellower numbers. What's yeah. quite funny is obviously the track seven is the one that was recorded in Seattle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which you wouldn't think. That no. Things meant to be the whole kind of sound of what came out of that it's, there. And it's no, it's of, not. It's kind of a ballad essentially. Yeah, it is. It is. So it's not, not, not. So in fact, I felt, I felt the Nirvana influence earlier on, ironically. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, pick, I did pick up on that. Um, no, I, I particularly liked I Am A River, which is the closing track as well. Yeah, which I think it's possibly the best track on there. Yeah, one, I think. definitely. Uh, I also quite liked uh, Joe Walsh's guitar work on uh, the song Outside, which is the fifth, fifth track, which was one recorded in LA. I thought that was really really, really, really nice. Yes. I thought there was a couple of nice uh, nods to um, classic rock. So in Something For Nothing, the first track, 
it nicely steals a riff from Dio's Holy Diver whilst having a bit of Stevie Wonder Master Blaster kind yes. of thing going on in, underneath it. Underneath yes. it. And on, I think it's uh, What Did I Do, God Is My Witness, towards the end of that, it's uh, it got some really great guitar work over basically all the young dude's melody. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's 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 an enjoyable it's an enjoyable record. I'm because it's only eight tracks long, comes in at forty, just over forty minutes. Yes. Yeah. You know? No, it's a good album. Thumbs up. Good album. Thumbs up. Moving on to the fifteenth and uh, what will be definitely now the final studio album from Pink Floyd. Um, as listeners may or may not, may know, this is. Uh, came about from a bunch of kind of started tracks and outtakes from the Division Bell Sessions, which was their last proper studio album. And since Richard Wright, the keyboardist, died subsequently after that, they'd always kind of undenied about whether they should try and work what they had into something new, whether to create something totally new or just to use what they had and just tart them up and produce them better. Um, and they decided to do that and released a, an album at which uh, even on the kind of CD listing has side one, side two, side three, side four, um, and it, it comes across a bit like a um, soundtrack album in a way. Yeah, um, so. partly partly because it is it is a almost solely instrumental album, um, apart from a couple of couple of moments of talking and uh, the final track, uh, louder than words, um, which I'll get to in a minute, and. It's immediately recognisable both as Pink Floyd and as Pink Floyd from um, the latter two album period. It has that kind of uh, same kind of sound that um, was on Moment Relapse of Reason and The Division Bell. Um, this is another album where actually I think it gets better as it goes on. Yes. So I actually think side one is probably the weakest side of the uh, of the four sides, um, and then. I set the track "What We Do," which is uh, very nice. Uh, and side side two is uh, it was really interesting that actually it was Pink Floyd sounding almost like they did back in kind of late sixties, seventies with a metal metal album, very mm. much instrumental, very much kind of uh, interesting instrumental stuff. Some interesting sounds, going on, some nice drumming, some nice kind of um, soundscapes being created. Um, and uh, I think it's Anisina, particularly the track I really liked at the end of. Um, side two um, and I think side three and side four are both just excellent really really like, really, really like them it's just really really easy to listen to they kind of, kind of flows perfectly it's mm. brilliant guitar work mm -hmm. um, got some quite obviously still showing a bit of sense of humour because they've got Talking Hawking song <laughs> which has Stephen Hawking which is brilliant uh, so, and, you know, <laughs> and including Stephen Hawking saying make sure you keep on talking yeah which is, yeah, I quite like. I quite like the kind of joke in that. It's a great saxophone on one of the tracks. I'm sure which one it was. Um, I can't which one I think it might have been on one of the earlier tracks, but yeah. really nice. Um, and it, as I said, it ends with the uh, aforementioned loud, loud, louder than words, which um, they were in two minds whether to have any singing on the album, but um, I'm glad they did because this is actually uh, a very, very good song. Yes, and. Also, they enabled them to give the radio something to play to help plug, so the, plug the album. Plug the album. Not that yeah. that's a cynical move, but you know. No, I'm not. They would have needed it anyway. <laughs> um, but it is a, a great track. Yeah. Um, so, so off to a slow start, but actually pretty decent. And if, and if you like kind of uh, kind of atmospheric, -y, slightly guitar-y instrumental pieces, it's good. Yeah. Um, there's not much I can add to that, but I will. Uh, there is. Um, it, for for Pink Floyd fans, I was worried. I was worried that, that that this, you know, because it's been twenty years since the last sort of mm. proper studio album, The Division Bell. I did think, oh, maybe this is an album too far, and 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 what, of course, once I heard it, it was like an album of sort of cast off instrumental bits and pieces. I thought, oh blimey, oh no, no, for, this works perfectly as a Pink Floyd album mm. in its own right. This is this is you know, it's a consistently good record throughout with some actually excellent moments at various points throughout particularly as you say sides three and four um it finds yeah it does find it at some time to find itself yeah it, it does it, time to find it's a bit too atmospheric for some yeah reason, so. at the, particularly at the start it's, it's got a whole vangelis thing going on yeah it's, it's just like you know I thought that, yeah, yeah i thought i thought the, the 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 title sequence from blade runner los angeles 2019 popped into my head <laughs> well they're making a sequel yeah, yeah. Theme, theme music. exactly and i suppose the criticism is um 
as much as they've sort of polished it and updated it, it does still sound like an album recorded either at the late 80s on the one hand or at times between the cracks of, as you say, metal yeah. and, and Wish You Were Here. You know, it's, it, and, and, but actually, rather than that be a criticism, that, I think that's what's endearing about it as, as a Pink Floyd album. It, it's very much from, from the heart yeah. of, of what they do and what they have done. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's, that's sort of the, the main point I wanted to add. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the talking Hawking. I also like Alan Z part two. Oh, well, I like both Alan Z parts. Uh, I think but yeah, good. definite, and you're gonna love hate me for saying this, definite PSB moment <laughs> in Alan Z part two in particular. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sort of. Early. And I thought I could shoot on Todd Rundgren. Uh, no, I've shoot on the remotest not. places. Yeah, no, that was. I know. I appreciate that's quite remote. But if you've listened to the release period, uh, and particularly Disco Three, which followed it, definitely a Disco I Three tinge there. I, I didn't think you had. Um, so yeah, definitely put in Alan Z Part Two. Um, and louder than words. Now I, I had a mixed relationship with this song. Um, on the one hand. I actually thought when I first heard it, I thought, "Oh, that's a bit, bit of a, a bum note on which to end what had, up until that point, yeah. been a brilliant, you know, album of of, of instrumental work." I thought I just felt like it was shoehorned in at the end. We must have one with vocals, as you say, otherwise we'll have nothing to play on the radio. But actually, the more you listen to the lyrics, mm. it's more an anthem for what they do or what they have done, and it it comes back to that theme that we've touched on occasionally over the years. It's just like that: music equals equals what we do, the way of life. Yeah. You know, heaven is whenever, or yep. that sort of thing. Um, so it it it, ha- it had a really sort of nice feel, you know. Actually, when I think about it, like, rather than a bum note, yeah, it's actually a very nice bookend. Yeah, on which to on which to finish. And I think it was also trying to kind of add, add in bits of uh, to say something about Richard Wright. Yes, you know, lyrically as well yes. as well as just exactly. It, it had that tribute to it again the wish you were here sort mm. of element creeping in of course with his passing but um, you know yeah no, it's very yeah a, a Pink Floyd fan um, I'd encourage any Pink Floyd fans I know and I do know some yes. um, to not be discouraged by, by, by some of the reviews yes because some of the reviews were quite discouraging actually forget the reviews you'll love this if you've never listened to Pink Floyd before don't start here <laughs> wise advice <laughs> moving on uh, to our uh, country section mmm um, country's back country's back yeah, yeah. Uh, w- where uh, have you been all year country's back with one person we've had before and one have person we? that's all new to us oh right uh, uh, all new to oh us. yeah of course yeah. all new to us is <laughs> I uh, am here all week <laughs> Angelina Presley yes American middle class uh, her debut solo album yeah uh, she's, been, she's been around for a few years and in fact for the last few years she's been part of the Pistol Annies with Ashley Munro and Miranda Lambert both of whom have already released solo albums to much acclaim Yep. Indeed, Miss Lambert pretty much cleaned up at the uh, CMA Awards this year for her last album. Uh-huh. Um, so she's been working with some good people up to now, but she's eventually decided it's time to go out on a lonesome and release her debut album. Mm. Uh, was it worth the wait? Definitely. Um, my life is richer for listening to this album. Uh, I'm not kidding. Um, this is it's, it's such a... I don't know. There's been a dearth of music this year or whatever, but we haven't definitely have not had any country... And it was just so refreshing to listen to a, a, a good, solid, but I don't want to use solid, a good, yeah, you know, well-built country album. Um, you know, every every track on here told a story and was very, very enjoyable to listen to. Um, like Casey Musgraves. Yeah. Only with, uh, I mean, that's to say all country has that social or political commentary riding through it. Yes. But th- that was more acute at parts on this album as well. Um, so it felt like it had that little bit more maturity to it. That's not to diminish what Casey Musgraves is doing at all, which we also very much like. Um, but but you know this had this had more of a you know sort of the working poor or the aspiring middle class as a theme. Yeah. You just rolled your eyes then. No, it's because I could hear I could hear a small child oh, shouting. Oh, that that me. happens to be all. I can I can hear them when. when I usually manage to block them out. But yeah, no, <laughs> well, good luck with that. Um, so you know it had that more. Um, it had that 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 tinge to it, particularly tracks four. Four through to six, mm. where you actually do have some commentary from a from a former coal miner. You got yeah, a comment. Dad never crossed the picket line. Exactly, you got a whole commentary there on on what's happening in the states now with, the, you know, both with the financial crisis and the resulting collapse in welfare. One of a better mm. topic. Um, so 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 it felt very current in that respect as well, and yet timeless. 
in terms of that social thing that country music has always done um so yeah That's very cool. enjoyable record um and yet you know positively cheerful throughout despite dealing with some pretty gritty stuff yeah, I think that's, that's, uh, that's true. I mean, I, I would tend to agree with most of what you've said, said there. I, I, mean, I don't think it's quite as good as the Casey Musgrave or Brandy Clark albums from last year for me. However, it's still, it's 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 still up there, and what, certainly on this outing, this, she deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as those two ladies and of um, people like Ash, Ashton and Roma and Lambert, who are at the forefront of this kind of new wave of mm. female country artists. Who are both making out albums that uh, appeal to kind of wider kind of pop audiences, yeah. uh, whilst also maintaining the kind of core cool country crowd as well. Um, so the album kicks off really kicks off the songs almost kind of Cheryl remind me of Cheryl Crow actually. Yeah, no man, very much like a, the Cheryl Crow of um, Tuesday Night Music Club. So when she first yeah. started off, as opposed to bizarrely now when Cheryl Crow is actually recording country albums. Yes, I know exactly. So yeah. Funny how things go. Mm. <laughs> um, then you're right. There's, there's, there's some, some great stories, storytelling as a grocery store. This kind of thing of uh, basically, I think of everyone having a secret and, and just looking at the kind of minutiae of uh, almost kind of vignettes of various different kinds of people going to their grocery store to shop at night and stuff. I quite love that. That, that. You know, paid in pills about you know people popping pills as mm. the kind of solution to, to problems. Problems. Yeah. Um, there's um, a couple of lyrics that made me. Uh, laugh and smile uh, dry country blues um has that great line there good christian good christian women locking their front doors playing their daughters don't turn into men ah, yes, yes uh with the chorus of not a beer joint in sight half the country's laid off laid up or getting high um there's also some really funny lyrics in knocked up um which is yeah. <laughs> it's a song about what you think it's about and this is this, this, this exactly what you think yeah, it's about it's a great, great thing yeah um I think her favourite track on the album I was reading is Better Off Red right. um, which she said is, is partly about that whole thing of when you leave your your small town to go make it make it big somewhere and how you get resentment from people thinking oh you've abandoned your roots kind of thing yes. but where you haven't yeah. really you're still you know you're still a yes. good home girl but you just happen to have had to move away to yeah. make your mark mm. um, but yeah it's a, again another album that comes in at about 40, 40 minutes or so and it passes the time in fact, I really enjoyed this record, actually. So, <coughs> let's get the banjos out. And uh, Bella Fleck and Abigail Washburn, first album together. Uh, we reviewed Abigail Washburn's uh, previous album. Uh, in fact, we, we liked it a lot and liked her even more when we saw her live. In fact, one of our favourite CTTB outings. big outings. Yeah, memorable gig. Yeah, it was a cracking. I liked her even more when she signed my record. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so this is... Uh, her first album with her husband, uh, who is also a banjo <laughs> player. So yeah, so war warning the advance kids: if you don't like banjoing, this album certainly isn't going to appeal to you because uh, there's a lot of banjoing going on here. Banjoing of all different sizes, shapes, twangs, and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and because of that, it's it's a bit of a mixed bag for me. Oh. Uh, I think when it works well, it, it works very well. Yeah. I think some. I think there is some really great stuff on it. Uh, and even when they're kind of almost playing with the, the whole kind of format of the thing, the, the first track "Railroad" mm. is a good typical kind of uh, you know um, folky, folky country song. Song yeah. banjos going on, and then just kind of they had a humorous note by kind of kind of blending in parts of kind of "Oh Susanna," you know, kind of, "Oh Susanna," mm -hmm. come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee yeah, towards yeah, the end yeah, of the, the song without yeah. singing it, but musically. Yeah. I really kind of like like liked that liked that. So also a couple of cracking kind of murder ballads on here. Um, pretty, was it, was it pretty Polly particularly is a really kind of fun kind of grimy kind of almost Nick Cave lyrically kind of tune. Um, there's uh, New South Africa, which is the uh, I think the only instrument enter piece on it, if I remember rightly, uh, which is possibly my favourite track. Is that, that's album. the first one. Yeah, which is just a yeah. beautiful piece of instrumental music. Yeah. Um, which shows off both their playing brilliantly. Um, there are a couple of tracks on it that reminded me very much of her uh, solo album. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking particularly um, Ride to You and What Are They Doing in Heaven Today. Yeah, We're both very uh, evocative of that kind of mixed, mixture of kind of soulful singing and uh, presentation and um, mm. country. Um, 
And there were bits and pieces elsewhere that I kind of liked, and bits and pieces that didn't quite, or haven't to this point, quite worked for me. So I kind of like it, but with reservations. Okay. I utterly enjoyed this album. Oh. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Just brilliant. Look, look, I've even just put, I've just put a big star next to it. <laughs> I can't even, I haven't even written any notes, I've just written a big star. Um, I, I just found this such an enjoyable record. I don't know if it just, I don't know if, I don't know if, um, if, uh, the, um, in a country frame of mind. Yeah, maybe I was in a country frame of mind this month. Maybe, maybe the, um, Anna, Annabelle, Annabelle Presley. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe the previous record. Angelina Presley. Yeah. Uh, warmed me up to this. Well, this just came on between, I think, Food Fighters and something else. And, um, I just really enjoyed, I just instantly fell in love with this record. It's quite, quite rare that happens nowadays. No, you I actually know, put yeah, a record on and you think oh my goodness I'm going to enjoy this without hearing <laughs> any further than <laughs> 20 seconds into track one you know um, yeah no really enjoyed this record uh, something something just something about it really clicked inside with me it, it maybe maybe it's the lyrics maybe it was again you know it touches on some darker stuff it touches on some more spiritual stuff um, shame there wasn't any Chinese opera inspired tracks as though as they were on her this solo is album. true yeah I know niche but yeah, very that, niche. that aside um, maybe Bella isn't into the kind of uh, Chinese opera uh, yeah maybe maybe, the... maybe he, he put, a, put a stop to that but you know some really great instrumentals as well uh, you mentioned the first one New South Africa there's also for children and there's a whole of course, sort yes, of suite sorry, of, yes. of stuff there as well and uh, even a track called Banjo Banjo which uh, obviously features banjos yeah uh, I had a kind of Eastern European feel yeah. to it yeah, kind of almost gypsy. So, music, so not not, mean, not, gypsy, not yeah. Chinese. Yeah, I mean gypsy music is in gypsy music, not kind proper, of gypsy music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not Chinese, but you sort of proper sort of, you know, translation ethnic. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. No, utterly, utterly enjoyed this album. Really worth checking out. There you go. What a bit of a roll. Yeah. Uh, so two fifty four. Yeah. Uh, second yeah. second album, and I think we did reviewed the first album as well, if I remember right. Did we? I think we did, yeah. You sure? Yeah. I remember you went to a gig. I did go to a gig, yeah. yeah. I think, well, maybe we didn't do the album. I can't no, I don't think we did. Well, yeah. I, I could just say... You did. You liked it. Uh, yeah, I could just say the same difference. Okay. Anyway, but... <laughs> um, okay, so... Spoiler, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert from my opinion. Well, what do you think, Pete? Um, this album I struggle with. Because um, I, I really wanted it to be good. Um, I've listened to this about three or four times now. I've actually... These last two albums... I've listened to more than I think I usually listen to albums yeah. when preparing for this podcast just because I wanted to really sort of crack the nub of why I wasn't quite getting it yeah I um, might disagree on the next one I think we might um, it's it although no we'll come to that um, this album really opens strongly for me uh, again sort of big sort of brrr, sort of synth soundscape guitars and sort yeah. of big sort of crashing 80s sort of Opening. yeah exactly um, you get it uh, really enjoyed that uh, first few tracks actually uh, the more I listened to it the more I got into uh, I'll be honest uh, you listen to an album four times you're not going to yeah. completely dislike all of it um, somewhere in the middle my ten tension wanders I sort of get a little bit lost I think that just sort of loses me somewhat and then at the end it sort of builds up again into a, into a sort of classic sort of closing indie album closing um I mean, it, I, I, bit, yeah. it does. I really wanted to like this album more. Uh, maybe I'll give it a look. Look, I'm even wearing the, the badge. Can you hear that? Yeah, I'm even wearing the badge. Or button. Or the button. Um, that's how. That's how well. I, that's how much I wanted to like this album. Yeah. I, um. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I liked the first album, as, as you said. As, as you said, I, I kind of, I kind of liked the fact that they had that kind of uh, element of kind of curve. Mm. And it's like they wanted to be curve, but weren't quite there. It's more of the sh sweet shoegaze topping, if you like. Yeah, it was very uh, shoegazy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, and I liked that album, and I, but I felt let down a bit by the fact, and I felt this the same when I saw them live, that it was a bit too samey. And I just wanted them to kind of let go a bit and be a bit more, you know, yeah, every now and again. And if I'm honest, my problem with this album is that all over again. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a more okay. Um, this is a better. This is a better sounding record. It's more. It's a mature, mature record, and the the production and the whole kind of sound is an improvement. But I still kind of get that kind of uh, yeah, too much sameness going on, and there's not enough oomph. 
Um, on the plus side, I think vocally distinctiveness-wise, she no longer sounds like she's doing Tony Halliday <laughs> impersonations. Really? Okay. Um, Crest kind of rocks, tries to rock out a bit in the middle of the al- album, and uh, uh, Pyro, af- Pyro. After, 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 yeah, Pyro after it. Yeah. Uh, but I did have to make notes about this this album primarily because I kind of thought actually once I'd listened to it three times I really looking at the list I couldn't remember which tracks were the one that I so quite liked and which ones were the ones that kind of washed over me this this is partly the problem I had yeah yeah um, so it's it's an okay record and maybe that you know I'm still going to keep an eye on them because I still think there are there's possibilities there and it, it's a perfectly okay album to listen to hmm. it's just um, you must have liked them enough to buy me the button yeah there were better albums this month yeah yeah I agree with that last statement uh, so we finish uh, with what for me is one such album actually but we may disagree uh, the 12th <laughs> studio album uh, by Deerhoof uh, again one of those bands I'd heard of and known of for several years but I'd never knowingly heard anything by them until we decided to do this record um, and I have to say uh, it's just thir- it's 32 minutes long and this was 32 minutes of pure delight for me right um, I goodness. really, really love this album. Oh. It reminded me of the best bits of Go Team with the smattering, smattering of flaming lips, mm. um, particularly the second track, Mirror Monster. Yeah. Uh, although, um, as I was speaking to somebody about this uh, the other day, you could argue that they're basically reappropriating the sound that Flaming Lips borrowed from them in the first place. Right. Um, and there's also what I was like this: you've got that as the kind of basis, but then you've got elements of kind of the Beach Boys and kind of Captain Beefheart and Frank Zappa and the Ramones kind of thrown in there too uh, which is no bad thing in my book um, and I just like the kind of the fact that it's, it is this kind of warped dance rock record really that's just kind of packed with kind of repeating musical uh, ideas and motifs and vocal riffs um, that was more refreshing than most of the things we've listened to during this year quite frankly um, uh, open at Paradise Girls with its kind of military, military style drumming uh, and then there's the great kind of uh, guitar riff repeated over the chanted lyrics of you know basically about girls who want to play a bass guitar <laughs> and the lyrics are quite minimalist on this album it's lots of kind of yes. repeated lines yeah. um, it's like they've been you know, reading from the Morrissey playbook so with, I can't let you in but without kind of you know meet his murder yeah. uh, going on um and then there's just some stuff that's just plain wacky that I just love. So Last Fad is a perfect example of it. It's going, you've got kind of wooden block and bass beat starting off. And then you just get some wacky shit verging on avant-garde jazz stuff thrown in. And Tiny Bubbles, another track, kind of follows follow suit. With that noise? Yeah. The, how would you describe that noise? Um, I wouldn't. Listen no. to the album. Yeah. Uh, Listen to the album. Tiny Bubbles. Yeah. That noise. Uh, but then on, on top of that, then you then have X Only, which is a straight-out punk song. Really, kind of guitar to the floor. Um, you've also got the guitar punk thing going on in God Two, which almost has that kind of glitchy guitar. It's almost like a computer game kind of sound at the start. Yeah. Um, and then you get the, the album, then tails off into this kind of almost gets kind of normal towards the end of the album. So you get Black Pitch, which is kind of funk, almost reggae beats and bass going on, and then Obama, which reminded me of the the Cure if they'd been on a night out with Captain Beefheart and got the flight <laughs> day and I thought yeah let's just make ourselves sound a bit more kind of weird so I so I, I was pleasantly surprised by this this, yeah. this this album first listen I was kind of hmm not so sure second listen I was sucked in and kind of thought this is great mm. okay first three les- listens or lessons listens just didn't get it didn't get this album at all <laughs> did nothing for me first three listens I was just I was just like oh, I don't know I'm missing something here um, yes, I get the avant-garde stuff. Yes, I get the, I certainly get the flaming lips influence or, or re- reappropriation. Um, uh, and then, and then, and then, then fourth listen. Yeah. Yeah, something clicked. So um, I would say, uh, obviously, you were, uh, you thought it was, you thought this was for you was the Abigail Wash, but album for for me, hmm. um, instantly enjoyable. I would say though, if you don't enjoy this album, keep listening. Because actually, it's 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 one of those. It, for me, it was a grower, um, and, and again, it's only thirty minutes long. And it's only thirty minutes long, so you, you can repeat and listens. Um, you're absolutely right. A Paradise Girls, great opener. Yeah, 
great opener um and uh you know uh, tiny bubbles and, and all that weirdness and the, the, the punk tracks that you've already mentioned uh, it actually does start to sort of draw you in you think oh this is this is, this is, this is what i wanted the 254 to be i wanted to do a good sort of indie album yeah you know um and this is what i was striving for with this particular podcast this is why i kept repeat sort of this definitely want to have to listen to this album again even though i haven't got time um no so i'm glad i did because actually on that fourth listen it all started to fall into place so agree with everything you've said haven't enjoyed it as much yeah if i'm honest and i still think it sort of fades out towards the end yeah, it does a bit. It does a bit because it, yeah, it loses almost, momentum. It gets a bit kind of normal almost. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which is a bit of a shame because because I was quite liking the kind of barking bits. Yes, the barking bits start to grow on you because at the first you're like, "What is this?" I mean, I've even written here that you know um, an earlier scribble of mine ne- next to the Metacritic cri- Metacritic yes. Metacritic score, um, which seems you know crazily high, practically eighty out of a hundred. And I'm like, "What?" Yes, against uh, sixteen okay, against Foo Fighters, and, Foo uh, Fighters, which was really good. Uh, Pink Floyd, I can understand that being 58, but you know, um, but it, it, yeah, it was seemed crazy to me. But actually, the more and more I listen, the more and more I think, that was quite a good album. Yes. So you've you, you've um, you've sold it to me. <laughs> and I always say, oh, I'll give it another go, but we'll be listening to Take That or something, so I won't have time. This is this is true. Well, that's half an hour though. So that's good. That's the good thing about it. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do different. What I usually do, but I'm just going to say my my non-album of the month is, is 254. Yeah. Okay. Well, I agree, we agree on that. Uh, uh, you know, I really want to like album. I, I, I have I have positive things and good vibes about all the other albums in different yeah ways. different ways. Even that last album, Deer Hoof, which up until today I'd have said was probably my least favourite record of the lot. Actually, even now that's sort of one up on 254 for me. So I agree with you, 254. So, so if you're not going to buy an album this month, don't buy that one. Don't buy that one. No. Yeah. So, what's your favourite though? Ha <laughs> This is quite a good podcast. Yeah. Music it, wise, it would be hard actually for me to pick a favourite because because I know for a fact whatever I say now, by the time we've left the building <laughs> and got to the pub, I'll probably change my mind and go actually no, <laughs> you know, it really should have been that. Yeah. Um, and I mean that because because as you say, I. I will probably give the, for example, I will probably give the Bella Fleck and I'll be going to watch for an album more listens simply because I, I, the, the bits I do like on it mean I will listen to it again because yeah. I do like it. I'll be going to watch for it anyway and I like her voice. The Pink Floyd, the Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd, I think it's one of those ones where it depends on what kind of mood you're in. Yeah. You know, if you if you want some kind of just, you want something just to chill out to, Pink yeah. Floyd, definitely. If you want something to go, obviously you're going to go for Foo Pink Fighters. Fighters. That's a good album. And if you want to just listen to some really lovely music, yeah, then both Angelina Presley yeah, and, and the Bella Fleck. Uh, yeah. Thing. And if you just want some mad ape shit rock yeah. music, then it's going to be dear. I'll tell you what, there's something, there's something for everyone this time. Yeah. It's almost like this is our Christmas podcast. And almost. It's not our Christmas it's podcast. It's not our Christmas podcast. And thanks for asking. Yes, we are going to do our Christmas <laughs> podcast, as per usual. Uh, it'll be with you on the 23rd of December. And of course, there'll also be a best of, which will be by no way, shape, or form recorded way, way, way in advance and then broadcast on 31st of December. <laughs> anyway, until those two exciting uh, uh, events. Blimey, we've got three podcasts in this month. Yeah. Fantastic. The first featuring a studio audience for <laughs> only our second time ever. Oh, yes. Nothing was going to possibly go wrong there. Uh, yes, we'll see you then. Bye. Right. been listening to the CTTV Music Podcast.